Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Hi, this is Ted Thomas again, and welcome to the podcast. This is going to be all about making money with tax lien certificates and tax deeds, which are defaulted properties. Now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to point out how you can make some pretty large checks of $25,000, $50,000, even $100,000. And you can do that working from home. And uh, many people do it while they're using a laptop. Now, it's, the internet is full of hype. In other words, there's lots of people making massive claims, and some of the information is just outright fabrications. Now, this is going to be the real deal. The presentation will include actual case histories. It's a business that we do with the county. The investment is always made directly with the county. Our checks are going to come back from the county when we're involved in tax lien certificates. So I'm going to guide you to success in the business. I've been successfully doing this since 1989. And the examples that you hear will actually be from students that I've guided to the point where they could make money. If you're just curious, well, just continue listening. This is a business that's been around for 200 years. I've only been involved with it since 1989, but it always works and you'll be impressed and you'll be amazed. And some of the examples I'll give you will set you back a little bit and you'll be skeptical, but this is always the real deal that I'm gonna talk about. I'm a practitioner. This is how I make my money. So I'm in the trenches doing investments all the time. I teach different levels of people. I have young mothers that work with me. I have career women that work. I have grandmothers. I have young men that get started. I have grandfathers. In other words, there's a whole spectrum of people I've taught how to do this. And over the time that we do these podcasts, you'll get to meet them and you'll see that they, when they buy tax lien certificates, they'll invest directly with the government. And they're doing that because they are people that want safe, secure investments. So if you invest with a government and you buy a tax lien certificate, you'll find out that investment will pay up to 18% in Florida, 24% in Iowa. And there's millions of those certificates to buy nationwide. The government is basically selling those certificates because people didn't pay their taxes. Now, why haven't you heard about this before now? Simply because the government doesn't pay commissions on tax certificates. Now, what do I mean by that? When the government doesn't collect their money on property taxes, In half the states, they issue a tax certificate. In the other half of the states, they'll actually take the property and confiscate it. But on the tax certificate, they don't pay a commission. So brokers aren't going to tell you about it, bankers, attorneys. But we're here to tell you about it because I'm an author and a publisher, and that's what we do. We teach people. Now, a tax certificate is predictable. You invest with the government. You buy that certificate from the government. So you invest it with the government. So your money is safe and secure. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to be predictable, okay? And it's going to be predictable because you're going to buy the tax certificate and it'll have a rate of interest on the tax certificate. For example, the bank has a rate, currently rates are between 1% and 2%. But compare that with Florida tax certificates, which pay all the way up to 18%. So there's the incentive for you to buy one. Think of the high interest rate that you're going to learn. Now, I'm going to transition back and forth between tax lien certificates and tax deeds so that you can learn both of them. The government sells tax lien certificates at the local level. In other words, they're sold at the county level. Now, the county needs money to pay their bills. For example, the county employees, the school teachers, the police and fire departments. So they're going to be determined to get their money. So if you don't, or a property owner doesn't pay their taxes, then what they'll do is they'll sell those taxes. They will actually create a certificate and they'll sell the taxes to investors like you and me. Now, why would we want to pay someone else's taxes? It's real simple. When you pay someone else's taxes, you do a lot of good things and you do good things for yourself. So let's tell you what happens to you first. Tax certificates in Florida pay all the way up to 18%. So you put $10,000 in and you're going to, your $10,000 is now earning up to 18%. Depends upon what your certificate sells at. All right. In other states, the certificate could pay all the way up to 24 or even 36%. So there's the incentive for you. But what are you doing when you buy a tax certificate? You're investing your money with the government. That makes it safe and secure. You're giving your tax certificate back, which means you control the property. But what's happening to the money? The money is paying someone else's property tax. And when it does, 
that homeowner is really happy because they don't get thrown out of their property. That means they stay in the property. They just owe you for their taxes and the high interest rate. However, the government is really happy because you're helping the government. You not only pay the county employees, but you pay for the schools, pay for the police department, fire department. You pay to give money to the hospital, keep the library open. In other words, your money is well used by the county to keep all the county services going on. Now, in the tax deed states, it's a little different. Those states, if the people don't pay the tax, the government notices the people many times. They give due process. They notice, notice. And when they do that, they let the people know that the property will be confiscated if it's not paid for. So thousands of people do not pay their property tax and lose the property to the government. The government doesn't want property. I can assure you they want money to pay the county employees and the school teachers. They don't want the property. So what do they do? They sell it at auction. That's called a tax deed auction. How much does the property cost? They're going to give you incentive to buy their property. So they want to collect their taxes. So they'll sell it very close to what back taxes are owed. So if $20,000 back taxes are owed, that auction could start as low as twenty thousand dollars on a hundred thousand dollar property so if it's a bigger property has more tax then there'll be more tax due but your starting bid will more than likely be the back taxes which are delinquent okay now it's not unusual at these auctions to see 100 200 300 homes sometimes farms even commercial buildings okay now i've attended auctions in many counties in the united states and in this podcast I'll try to show you and give you examples of how this works. Don't be surprised if your county has 50, 100, or 200 properties that they're willing to sell for as low as 20 cents or 10 cents on the dollar. I'll give you real examples of people actually doing this and making that kind of money. Okay, now I mentioned on my earlier podcast that in Los Angeles County, sometime they had 200 or excuse me, 2,000 properties to sell, and that's a wealthy county. Now, other counties will actually have more than 2,000 properties that they're willing to sell, and usually the auction starting bid will be the delinquent back taxes. Don't be surprised to hear me say people will buy properties for 5 and 10 cents on the dollar. My whole point in saying this is a business of abundance. There's going to be too many defaulted properties and not enough bidders. Now, why don't they sell them all? Because people don't know about the auctions. They don't know how to research. And all of this is a little on the shocking side, especially when you're starting out right now. Okay, these auctions are mandated and administered by the local government. They have nothing to do with me. They have nothing to do with banks. They only have county officials mandated and administrated. Of course, the legislature for each state makes the rules for the auction. So every auction will have different rules. That'll be part of the learning process. So I want you to get a visual in your mind of thousands and thousands of properties across the United States. Now, my students are adults. Many of them want one thing only. They want to make money. We're not in the fixer-upper business. We're in the business of buying low and selling low. Let me say that again. Every real estate course in the country will teach you buy low and sell high. This has got nothing to do with buy low and sell high. We want to buy low and sell low. Let's buy for 20 cents on the dollar and let's sell for 50 cents on the dollar and let's keep moving and make some money. All right, now let me switch back to those tax lien certificates so I can give you an example. Now, this young man that you'll hear in just a few minutes, I recorded this on video as he did it and I paid close attention to let him tell you the facts of what was going on. In case you missed what he said, he purchased tax lien certificates. That He didn't buy the property. He bought the certificates on two houses and 27 vacant residential lots. Now, to be clear, he is not buying the property. He's just paying to invest in tax lien certificates. That means he's not going to have any property management responsibility. He's not going to have any time spent fixing up the property. He's not going to do anything but purchase the certificate, and then he's going to take it home, and he's going to wait for that property owner to come in and pay the taxes. Let's listen to the audio of him now. I bought tax certificates, people that did not pay their taxes. I pay their taxes. 
I paid around $6,900, just shy of $7,000. I got 18% of my money. I just got redeemed in December, and I got $1,890 back, which is 18% on your money. Where in the economy of today with the banks and the mutual fund, are you going to get 18% of your money? It's not going to happen. Okay, how about that? He invested $6,900, and his profit was $1,800. Wow. 18% return on his investment, and he didn't do any work. Now, you heard him say it. He invested in a certificate. He took it home. He put it in his drawer, and he just waited. And when the people paid the taxes, he got paid, and he made an 18% return on his investment. His money was safe, and it was secure, and the county paid him 18%. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, what if I don't get paid? If you don't get paid, the county will award you the property and you'll receive the property with no mortgage. So this investment is gonna take a little time to learn about, but as you can see and you can hear, the average person that's worried about the future and worried whether they're gonna have money to pay their bills and whether they'll be able to pay into a retirement program can earn money and big money in this business. It's just a matter of learning how to do it. You don't have to worry about losing money because you're investing money with the government and that's gonna make it safe and secure. You can't invest with Ted Thomas. You're gonna invest directly with the government and you're gonna get a check back from them. And you understand now what happens if the people don't pay the property tax. 95 to 97% of the people will pay the tax. There's a very low chance that you will get the property at a tax lien certificate auction. Okay, so now that you've understood that, you can see that it would be a good investment for you to learn about tax certificates. Now, let me switch gears briefly before I run out of time in this podcast. The other investment is tax deeds. Now, about half of the states will sell the deed to the property. That means the property owner didn't pay and when they didn't pay, the county notices them and tells them, they put them in default and say, you're in default. If you don't pay the tax, you're gonna lose the property because we will confiscate it. And the county does confiscate it. Thousands of property are confiscated every year. Now, let me give you an example of that and you can listen to this audio. Now, this young lady, her name is Risha. She purchased a tax lien certificate. However, the property owner did not come in and pay. They did not come in and redeem and buy the certificate back from her. Now, unfortunately, that means they're going to lose the property. They didn't pay. Now, there's no gray area. This is cut and dried. It's black and white. If the property owner does not pay, you will get the property. And that's exactly what happened to her. So make no mistake about what I'm saying. I know this sounds unbelievable and you're skeptical. Risha paid $11,000 for a tax lien certificate. The property owner failed to pay the taxes. The government ultimately awarded her the property with no mortgage. Now listen, and she's gonna tell you a little bit about herself. She's a married woman with children and she did this working from home. She invested $11,000 and the property had an assessed value of $180,000. Here's Risha. Hi, I'm Risha Davis. I have a beautiful family. I'm married to this gentleman for seven years, and we have two young boys, a two-year-old and a four-year-old. I don't have a full-time job. This is what I do, and I do it because I can have my kids at home. I can take them with me on vacation. I can take them wherever I want to go, wherever we want to go, and I can do this all from a computer. I still want to contribute to the household. I want to make sure that we have enough funds to live the life we want. And having the resources and having the people that have our back and help us achieve that, it's incredible. This is life changing. This is something that really is something you can do 10 to 12 hours a week. You can do maybe even less than that, depending on your knowledge of that particular market or that system. This is an opportunity where you can earn more than you would at a job in a matter of days, in a matter of weeks. There's not that demand for you to fit societal pressures of getting dressed in the morning and, and making yourself up. It's, it sounds silly, but it's a lot of work for women to have to also put on makeup and have to wear a certain outfit. This is stuff you can do from your pajamas if you want. My all-in investment on this particular opportunity where I was successfully foreclosed on the right to redeem 
was about $11,000 on a property valued at $180,000. Now, that solo voice you heard was her husband, and they invested $11,000, and the property was valued at $180,000. My comment is, what other business do you know that in one deal you could make that kind of money? That's enough money to take care of your family all year and put a lot of money away in your savings plan. Now, did you listen to the numbers? She invested $11,000 and she was awarded the property, which had a value of $180,000. The upside potential was $169,000. Wow, think about that. Hi, this is Linda, and Ted always likes to give you more than you thought you were going to get. So this week, Ted is going to provide you with a resource paper titled Unexpected Values in Tax-Defaulted Properties. In these papers, you can learn to easily earn $25,000 on one property deal. Head over to tedthomaspodcast.com to check it out. I hope you're learning a lot on this podcast. In the next few minutes, We'll interview with a coach. Now, this is a little different learning environment, but I want you to hear these coaches. They're really certified and they're experts and they help us a lot because when you learn this process, you're going to need a guide. This is especially exciting for people that are entrepreneurs because if you have that spirit in your blood, you're going to see you can make a lot of money in tax lien certificates. So let's now go to a coach and you'll join my interview while it's in progress. It's always fun to have an expert. It makes my job really easy when I have an expert. So everybody calls me the tax lien authority and what have you. And that really makes me feel good. It's great for my ego. But I'll show you why I'm so good. It's because I surround myself with a lot of good people. And one of those people is a gentleman by the name of Bill Bellows. And he's not only a coach for me, but this guy's a businessman. And he's a very successful tax lien certificate buyer and tax defaulted property buyer. So we have an expert with us today. Bill, are you there? I'm here, Ted. Oh, welcome. Glad to have you on the call, Bill. First of all, can you take a few minutes and as long as you want, actually, tell us a little bit about you and what you've done over the past few years, and then tell us a little bit about your background and just tell us what you'd like us to know. All right. First of all, I met you in August of 2008 in Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh. And I bought your course at that point in time. And thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I spent a couple years on the, what was at that time, the Wednesday night question and answer hotline. Yeah. It wasn't a webinar yet. And yeah. I was learning all the information. I got a coach and I took and started going to the auctions in 2010. Oh, and so... Right off the bat, I was very successful. The first auction I went to, I got three properties. This next one, I got 10. No way. Way. You got 10? One. You got 10 at one auction? 10 at one auction, yes. Wow. Oh, my goodness. We'll come back to that. But go ahead, because uh, the, the audience wants to know about you, and they were, you're certainly establishing you're an expert. If you're already up to, what, 13? Wow. That's pretty 13 good. in the first year, yes. Wow. That's you amazing. Know? And so far, I've bought 70 tax-deeded properties as a total since then. Wow. And it's just been very s successful for me. And I like the fact that I can coach and encourage other people to do the same thing that I've done. Uh -huh. So it's just a matter of figuring out the process. It's not that difficult, but you do have to take and go through the process in the right order so that you're successful. And okay, are you a 20-year-old or are you a senior or where are you? I'm collecting Social Security Whoa. and I'm currently 63. Okay, good. All right, so 63-year-old guys buying 10 deals a year. How long does that take? Do you have to put in 40-hour weeks or do you work just a little bit? Or You said you did them all in 45 days. Yeah. Depending on what auction you find and how quickly you can find the 10 deals, uh, it would take, oh, maybe three or four weeks of doing 10 hours a week. And right before you go to the auction, you want to drive by the properties and check them out. And so that would a day or two to do that. But most of the time, I've gotten all those properties in the same counties. It's not super 
time intensive at all. I see. Now, do you specialize in one state or do you do many states? I've been to auctions in six different states, but I've only purchased properties in the home state of Michigan where I live. I see. Okay. So you've been to other auctions in other states, but okay, good. And okay, before we get into uh, nitty gritties of questions I want to ask you, can you tell us a little bit about Michigan? Sure. Michigan is a tax deed state. Okay. And they roughly have their auctions from August 1st through September 15th each year. There's one auction company that does 71 of our 83 counties. What's an auction company? It's an auctioneer and his staff. So it's a professional auctioneer. And I don't think they auction anything off, anything else off, except for tax deeded properties all across the state of Michigan. Okay. Do you want to elaborate on that or do you want me to? You can go ahead and do that, Ted. <laughs> I know I could. <laughs> okay. What you really mean is the county, uh, rather than do the work themselves, is they hire an auctioneer company to sell these tax defaulted or tax deed properties, right? Correct. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about the bidding process and stuff like that? Sure. There's a couple different ways you can buy properties in the state of Michigan. Uh -huh. You can go to the auction live, which is okay. what, so far, that's what I've done all the time is I attend the live auctions. You register, you get a bidder number, and you just hold up your card when you want to bid. And it's very simple to do that. Okay, good. All right. So all pretty right. simple. Now, there's also people who can bid on the internet. And there's actually three different methods that they can place internet bids with. Simultaneously? Or how do they do that? The first two methods they would do before the auction started. The third method they would do during the auction simultaneously as a live bidder. So can I be in Florida and buy in Michigan? Absolutely. You could be anywhere in the world and buy in Michigan. Wow. Okay. So they have to learn how to do that, but then they could do it online. Yes. Yeah. I, I know and you probably wouldn't marry the woman unless you saw her. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my case. And maybe that's why I'm still single. <laughs> okay, good. All right. It's probably the other way around too. They probably don't want to marry us unless they looked at us. So what's the deal there? How do you do that? there's a way for you to take and have somebody else look at the property unless you want to take and make a trip to Michigan. Oh, okay. And we would certainly welcome every, anybody and everybody to come to Michigan and check out our properties. And I think that's the best method if you do it personally, but you can hire a realtor or some other professional people and have them look at properties. And the big thing is you would want them to send you photos. And you really don't want their opinion. You just want a photo to make sure that there's not been a fire or some kind of significant damage to the property. Okay, I got it. All right, good. Now, how many, how many, do you know how many counties there are in Michigan? These are sold at the county, right? Yes, 83 counties. Good. Do they have other places? Do the city sell them or do, the, or do they have municipalities that sell them or anything like that? Just the counties. New England is where you get where the cities and townships sell them separately. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So first of all, tell me what, so you've been to a lot of these auctions, right? I probably have been to about 25 different counties in the state of Michigan. Wow. And how many counties are there? 83. Wow. Boy, you've been a lot. So uh, a little bit more than 25% of the state I've been looking at properties in. Okay. The problem with the world is that the only thing that uh, most of the people in the world know is about Detroit. Do you buy in Detroit? Absolutely not. Uh-oh, all right. So where do you buy? I buy in the rural counties, and I learned that from you, Ted. <laughs> Good. Yeah. I was hoping you'd say that. Uh, anyway, so would a rural county be Kalamazoo, like I learned in, in the old days? There are some rural areas in Kalamazoo County, but uh, the city of Kalamazoo is actually pretty large. Oh. Okay. And sometimes those kind of cities are all right to deal with, and sometimes they're not. I stay away from the city of Detroit, Pontiac, Flint, Battle Creek, city of Jackson, because they have some regulations that 
are not favorable once you obtain a property to either renting it or reselling it. Okay. And so how do you find out all these rules? How do you know that? A lot of it has to do with living here. And uh -huh. so that's one of the advantages that my coaching students have is that I can take and steer them away from the places that are not good to take and own properties that they get at the auction. So tell me, uh, where do I, I want to buy? A, I'm living in California and I want to buy a property. What do I have to do? I would go to the website for the auction company. All right. This is tax-sale.info. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You know them. Good, okay. And yeah. they'll start posting the lists sometime in the month of June. Really? And then originally what they do is they get all the locations where they're going to handle the auctions at, and they'll post those. And then after that, as they post the list behind each county name, the county name would be listed in black first, and then it switches to orange to take and uh, signify that the list is posted behind that. And that will include a lot of photos. Okay, nice, but what about rules? That's what I was concerned about. Oh, that would be right on the auction company's website. The, oh, yes. the same website I gave you, tax-sale.info. So they would have the rules for that auction, and would they have the rules for the state that how they were applying them and stuff like that? Basically, it's, it's the same way. Occasionally, there'll be a special rule in some county, uh -huh. but usually they will wait until the day of the auction to announce that. I see. Okay. okay. If they've bundled a few properties together or something like that, that would not be in the printed rules, but that would be in the announcement of rules before the auction takes place. Okay. So let me put you in the hot seat here for a second and ask you a few questions. Let's say I'm in California. We'll try a couple of these. I'm in California and I want to go to an auction oh, somewhere in the middle in, say, San Joaquin County, a place like Stockton, or I want to go to, to Fresno or one of these counties in the middle of the state. And I want to go there. What can I find out before I ever even dream about going anywhere? I, I could just stay home and find out. What can I find out? Okay. Most of the auctions in the state of California are handled by a company called bidforassets.com. Uh -huh. And you would go there just like you would to our auction company in the state of Michigan and pull up the rules for the county and then pull up the available property listings. Okay, let's move on. I think you said earlier that you've bought a lot of properties. So give me some examples of one or two of those, and then I'll get into nitty gritties because we're really covering some pretty heavy duty stuff here. Let's talk a little bit about the, oh, you bought one and you, you held it for a certain period of time and maybe you did something, maybe you didn't do anything, but you sold it. What people really want to know is, can they make a profit doing this? Oh, absolutely. Okay. There's not a problem with that whatsoever. So I have bought a couple times I bought a house for $10,000 and resold it for 30000 Did nothing to it and sold it a little. You have to wait 45 days for the deed to come. But wow. then within another month or two, I sold it. So you buy it and resell it 90 days? Would that be fair? Or, or oh, yeah. Days? Yeah, that's oh, very yeah. fair. Okay. All right, everyone. We've been talking with Bill Bettos from Michigan, and he's filling us in on some of his experience. He's a coach, and he really knows a lot. Bill, I'd like to invite you back for another call very soon, if you'll make yourself available. You did a terrific job today. This is information people can't get. They think they can get information, but this is the real deal because you're actually doing this. Now, last question for me is, how many deals have you done over the past few years? 70 deals, Ted. 70 deals, but you're not out doing buying from realtors. You're buying 70 deals at auction, right? 70 deals at auction. I've bought some other properties from realtors, but I'm talking about just the auction, 70 properties. Wow. Thank you. You did a terrific job. I'll call you back soon. Hi, this is Lance. I'm sure you have questions from time to time. Ted will answer those questions. Just email info at tedthomas.com. Then watch your email in 24 to 48 hours, and you'll have your answer. Hi, everyone. Special day today, especially for me. This is one of my mentors. As a result of knowing Ron Legrand, I made a lot of money. And I'm not talking about nickels and dimes. I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars from the techniques that he taught me. Now, this is a guy 
that started the whole concept of pretty house and ugly house. He started that trend many years ago. And it's really decades. Now, this is the real deal. I've been in his private jet. I've been on the back of his yacht on the Atlantic Ocean. This guy really knows his stuff. So if you don't have a notepad, you're probably in your car, you're probably gonna wanna play this back again. But Ron, it took me into his home and actually taught me how you teach people on a platform so that they realize that they need to be a real estate investor. Took me into his home, spent a whole day with me. As a result of that, I don't wanna brag, but I made six figure and seven figure incomes as a result of that. So I couldn't be more grateful than to have Mr. Ron Legrand with us today. So I'm gonna ask Ron just a couple of questions and then he's gonna run with it. You guys are in for a special treat. So Ron, can you take us from that service station in Ohio to having a private jet? <laughs> That's a long way. By the way, I don't have a private jet anymore. I had to throw that elephant off the ark after 2008. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, I understand that. I rode around in that, so I'll never forget it, and I won't forget what you've done for me. So tell people about you and what concepts in real estate people really need to know. First of all, I've been at this about as long as you have. You're older than me. Oh, definitely. I, I, Definitely, I'm older than everybody. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's true. That's true. Really? Uh, I I started in 1982. I don't remember what year you started. We met somewhere along the way, way back in the 80s. You became the expert on tax liens, and I right. became the expert on flipping, buying, and selling houses. So, right, right. I'm, most, both of us got our pitch. At this point, yeah. you've done some thousands of houses. How many houses have you, uh, have you done? Man, yourself? I quit. I quit oh. counting at 3,000 about 10 years ago. I don't know. Oh I still do them today. 3,000. 3, oh, my God. That's unbelievable. Anyway, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm going to keep quiet for a while. It might be unbelievable, but remember, that's over 37 years, Ted. Yeah. <laughs> so that's yeah. a long time. Yeah. And I still do a couple of months a day in my in my sleep practice, at least sitting here in osmosis. Because sure. everything we do is on autopilot today. There's a lot to do, but make decisions. Nice. And that's the way I want everybody to run their business. Sure. But I didn't start that way. I'll tell you that. Right. I was a mechanic and broke and decided I wasn't going to do that the rest of my life. And I went to my first seminar. Who, who in my my first seminar speaker was that put me in my two-day event? I'm probably going to guess and say Al Lowry could have been that far nope, back. Nope. No, it was Car Carlton Sheets. Oh, Carlton <laughs> Sheets from down in Stewart, Florida. Yeah, well, that, he, he was the gentleman of the industry. He really yeah, was. still is. Still yeah. is a gentleman. That was before I even before he even had a product of his own. Oh, yeah. Uh, anyway, that was my first exposure to real estate after I started looking. Yeah. And from there, three weeks later, I'll tell you, three weeks later, after I went to that two-day seminar that I couldn't afford, I had my first check for $3,000. And oh, I guess the difference oh. between me and most is I just kept on going while everybody else went back to work. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I bet you had some resistance on the way, though. Everyone telling you that won't work. That won't work. How many times did you go through that? Oh, I didn't hear that at all. <laughs> Not. Yeah. Of course, everybody tells you that. First guy was telling me that was my next door neighbor. I believe and that. Until, until I drove home a BMW. Then he said, tell me oh. a little bit more. <laughs> then, I, <laughs> then I moved to my dream house. and said, how, how do I get into this? So, yeah. 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 Anyway, he's, he's been in it ever since. He's, yeah. He became a client, right? <laughs> Go yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I like that. I like that. When you get involved in real estate, just starting out, everybody thinks it's pretty complicated and they think uh, they can't do it. So how did you get over those couple of hurdles? Uh, I got over it because I was broke. That's how I got it. Well, so I got to do something. I, yeah. I'll bet you weren't any more broke than you know, I was when I started. Really? But the difference between guys who think like it, uh, us and most is that that won't stop us. We just figure out how to wait, how to get do it. Yeah. Again, I had to borrow the money to get to my little old first seminar. It was only 400 bucks. Really? But it, uh, I got there. Again, three weeks later, I had a check for $3,000, biggest, most important check I ever had in my life. Yeah. So I started when I was broke, but I didn't stay there very long. I, Heck, I by the time I was in this thing three or four years, I had w a couple of years. Actually, I was way over a million dollars in equity, but of course, I, I didn't have enough of that cash flow. Yeah. Over the years, we built systems to make it easy. In fact, today, it's never been easier than it's been in my entire life because of delegation, automation, systemization, and we've spent all this time building systems for people so they don't have to do anything but follow the footsteps and get out of their own way and let other people do all the grunt work and for a very small amount of money. And frankly, that's the way I run all my businesses. I have several, including a restaurant. I don't work there. Wow. If I had to work there, I wouldn't have one. Wow. So I just put people in place and let them do what they do best or outsource it or whatever. All right. I have to do is sit around and decide who I want to buy from and who I want to sell to. 
So you uh, not only learn something, but you uh, then have trained uh, literally, I know for a fact, you've done thousands of other people you've taught how to do this. And when a person's successful, there's rules they're following. Can you tell us about those rules? Well, first of all, are you saying, are they successful in marketing or successful in real estate? Which one should you? Thank you. That matter, does it? Yeah, I think that the, the average person that would listen to you and I, they don't even think about marketing. You and I know it's very important. So uh, talk yeah. about the real estate part first. And then if they want right. to grow, they're going to become a marketer, wouldn't you say? And actually, in real estate, that's really not necessary because no. I've already done that for them. Yeah. But oh, yeah. you're in the information marketing business, and you right. and I've taught a lot of people to enter that and become teachers, students right. who turn to teachers in information marketing. Of course, they better learn marketing. They won't be around long. But right. fortunately, in real estate, all that old marketing that you and I used to do, it costs thousands of dollars a month. We don't need to do much of it anymore. It's all on autopilot and, right. and the cost is drastically reduced to a very small amount. The overhead running a business of buying and selling houses, I swear to you, listen to this, Ted. Yeah. The cost of running the entire business is less than my natural gas bill at my restaurant per You're month. You're kidding. You're kidding. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's <laughs> so, amazing. This, that's amazing. this business, I tell you, is, is hard to compare to it. Yeah, but you asked me how. What are the keys? Obviously, I, I got uh, number one. You better understand delegation, or you're not getting anywhere because you're going to be doing all the grunt work yourself. Right. So as long as you're working in the business, you can't work on it. Right. Somebody's got to be thinking about revenue, not minutia. Yeah. Then we have to follow that up with automation. Right. So that we don't have to do anything but delegate. Right. And then we have to follow that up with uh, some marketing, depending on what the subject is. Um, in real estate, it's pretty much done for you. Right. Buying and selling, there's almost nothing to do. Right. And then, of course, we have to systemize this thing so that it can keep on reproducing itself without a human being involved in every step of the way and a human deciding what has to be done day in and day out. Okay, so, now let's take a step back because I think the average person that knows that you and I are involved in real estate is thinking that we're buying some of these houses and then we're getting our ourselves over there painting and cleaning and all that stuff. You don't even go near any of that. You have someone do every bit of the work on that property, right? First of all, you're assuming that it needs rehabbed or stuff. Yeah. I make most of my money in the pretty house business today, uh -huh. which means I don't, not rehabs. No, oh, believe me, I've done a thousand of them, but Right. That's the hardest way to make money there is. Oh. And, of course, people coming in today, they watch them television shows, and, boy, I sure, I sure hope they're not thinking there's any reality in them because they're all fake news. They're all yeah. made-up stuff and entertainment. Yes. So rehabbing is it's costly. I've raised the money. you got to deal with contractors. It takes months to get a check. I've learned that there's another side of the business where I don't have to do all that crap. I'm in the pretty house business, I buy beautiful homes in beautiful neighborhoods. I don't have to raise capital because they either come with owner financing or I take over the existing debt. Good. Either way, the debt's already there right. and I don't have to do the work. So I can get in, get out. And how do I get out is I lease option them to tenant buyers. Good. So let's take a $300,000 house. I'll lease option it to the 70% of the market that can't qualify for a loan yet. Right. And I'll get uh, $20,000, $30,000 from them for a non-refundable deposit. Nice. It goes toward their down payment. Right. And I'll hand them the keys and they'll lease it with an option to buy. And if they get around to it, they'll go to the bank ultimately and get a loan as soon as they cleaned up whatever is broke that they couldn't qualify today. Wow. So I get a big check up front, sometimes as large as I'd make if I renovated a house. I get a monthly cash flow, which I think is even more important yes. from the difference between what they pay me for rent and what I pay out the underlying debt. Uh, sometimes those cash flows exceed $1,000 a month and they just go on for years and years. Wow. And then of course, if the equity on the back end, I, if, I, if they actually do go to the bank and get financed, I get whatever's left. But the truth is, most of mine never go to the bank. They ultimately move out and they forfeit their deposit and we go do it again. So I call these, I call them golden geese. They just keep on producing the golden <laughs> eggs. And, golden and, geese. And, 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 I love it. Yeah. They keep uh, well, <laughs> put, a tenant in, put a tenant buyer in at once and forget about it. And by the way, my tenant buyers are responsible for 100% of the repairs, so I don't do the repairs. Nice. So it's a different landlording business than people are accustomed to looking at it like. Believe me, I had my share of all those low-end tenants. I don't want any more of them. Oh, that's Jeez. for sure. That's one, for sure. One time I had over 200 Section 8 HUD tenants. Are you, you know, serious? 200? That was, back, yeah. back when I had dark hair. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Fun yeah. time that was. 
Now, you're famous, and uh, not just in your hometown, you're famous all over the United States for teaching mm -hmm. people real estate. So can you tell us a little bit about that business? Because I think there's a lot of people vision that they would like to do something for a while, become an expert, follow in your footsteps or something like that. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? So you want the key ingredients to, to do that? Well, well, the ones you want to give up. Uh, but actually, well, I know, I I know you could, you'll get, I know you'd keep them. You could tell us all of them because they'd have to do the work, and not everybody will do the work. That's true. Yeah. But I think it starts with knowing your subject. If you want to be in the business of selling information, which is what you and I do, you better understand what subject. You, in other words, you need to know more than other people know. There's there's a whole lot of what we call new rules out there today. They're teaching right. stuff they're really not that good at. Right. Go do two or three houses now, all of a sudden they're an expert. You can't be an expert at anything unless you've been in it a while and learned the good, the bad, the ugly, and got behind the scenes and really understand the business. Once that takes place, and I don't care what kind of product it is, it could be real estate, it could be tax liens, it could be anything for that matter. So what, first, you get good at what you do instead of trying to fake people into believing that you're good at what you do because they'll pick it up very quickly and they'll be gone which is why I guess I've been around for 31 years in the information business, 37 in real estate. And let me you interject. Too. You've been, in, uh, like I have, you've been in the low parts of the market and then the high parts. Uh, there's a yep. definite cycle in real estate that it, everybody so buy one and hold it for 40 years. And during that 40 years, a lot of things mm -hmm. can happen. And so you've been through yeah. some of them. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I started. I was told go buy properties, put tenants in them. One day you wake up rich. They just right. forgot to tell me what happens between now and one day. Yeah, and, yeah. And nobody taught me management. The truth is, I started out buying them all wrong place, wrong reasons, and just made a big mess. I had to clean yeah. it up. Took years to clean it up. It's all a different world. We do it without risk, and we don't use our money. We don't use our credit, and right. we produce massive income streams without all those downsides. And it's recession proof too, because people always need a place to live, even when values go down. Right. I'm assuming you don't have to cash out right away, but values going down won't hurt you any. And right. I really don't want to cash out. Starts with learning your subject, and then if you're going to be in our business, yours and my business, you better darn sure learn marketing, because you won't be around long. You know that. You taught me a lot about direct marketing. Right. You, you spent a lot of years learning it. I spent a lot of years learning it, and we spent a lot of stupid money actually learning it, doing stupid stuff, and still do today. Today, stay for well, that matter. You, you talked yeah. about gurus. I mean, a lot of people do something once and then they brag about it for their whole life, and they have no right. conception of what happened in good markets and bad market. And what do you do to sustain? Now, you have sustained business over these thirty-seven years. There's not a lot of people walking around that, that have been around thirty-seven years in the same or similar business. You think about that. I, I actually don't know any that are actually still aggressively teaching and marketing. That's right. Sorry. You and me have outlived them all. And we sure did that. A good thing we were healthy. But uh, I see some of the, the one thing I hate to see now is the shows that people are talking about rehabbing houses. And mm -hmm. that's, it's so outdated. It's just, it just shakes me because I see them tearing out bearing walls and putting beams up to look pretty. And people have no idea. <laughs> That's two hundred thousand dollars worth of stuff going in this house, and the house is only worth one hundred and eighty. I mean, yeah, I mean you, you know what they forget to leave out on those shows, and that's all the cost in the middle. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely amazing. Yeah. But the show people are nice entertainers, and the women are pretty, yeah. and and people yeah, watch yeah. and and whatever. And that, that that's so far from reality that I, I just shake my head and say, the poor guy that buys into that this when, because then followed yeah. by that, some weekend guy is going to come to town, and he's going to have a room with three hundred people. They're going to buy into that on fixing up properties. Yeah. They have no idea yeah. of what. No idea. And unfortunately, it's, it's bringing in, fortunately, it's bringing in a lot of folks who are inter uh, getting them interested in real estate. But unfortunately, if they go down that path, they ain't going to be around long. No, that's not, that's broke. the hardest ma way to make money there is. Yeah. And very expensive so, programs. The programs are not like yeah. you and I spent 600 and a thousand bucks to get in. These people are spending thousands and thousands of dollars and they don't mm -hmm. even know who they're learning from. They don't, they don't have a clue. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, the country's full of folks who will charge you a lot of money, but not deliver a whole lot. So exactly. we hear about them everywhere we go. Exactly. And now, anyway, let's go back. Learn your subject and learn your marketing and then make sure you're selling quality products and quality service. Because if you're right. not, you won't be around at right. uh, very long. Right. And we've both of us seen a lot of them come and go, haven't we? Yeah. Now, how about <clears throat> coaching? Are you a big advocate of having a coach and things like I that? I am indeed. Uh -huh. I am indeed. We call it mentoring. However, okay. I will not allow any of my students to be mentored until they've actually had the basic training because it's right. a waste of their money. 
Right. Um, it's amazing. Some people think they can actually just be on the phone for with somebody once or twice a week and learn the business. That ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. I have a four-day basic training where we teach them the business and make sure that they understand what they're trying to accomplish when they leave. And then mentoring is great. That that helps with the implementation, but that's not going to that's not going to take care of the training part. That's like trying to get to college and skip high school. Yep. Yeah. And the people at the same, I have a similar system, probably not a copycat of yours, but they're all similar that all the ones that work are are similar, it seems to me. But uh, I find that people that make the the real money, the six figure income, which is everybody claims they Mm -hmm. want, have all had Mm -hmm. some, they've either had a mentor or multiple mentors. We have people have multiple mentors. And then that's even more, they they make even more money and they're growable. And I know a lot of people aren't growable, but you've seen more. I have even. I tell people, take the time to investigate. Making six figures is nothing. In fact, if you ain't making six figures, you're not doing anything. Right. Our objective is get them to seven figures. And I've yeah. got a list as long as your leg of those people who are doing that. That's but nice. They got to follow the system. They got to stay at it. And they got to right. stay in there long enough to understand what they're doing. And it's like any other business and things you got to learn that you didn't know before. Yep. And and so take me along these steps once again, so they completely understand yours. You you, you bring them in, and then they they're gonna. I guess the first place they're gonna start is something basic, and then get into a a four day event where they're really gonna learn it. Is that how they do that? And then oh, you ain't gonna believe this, but I still teach it, Ted. Congratulations. <laughs> so yeah. I, well, this weekend, well, crap, three full days gotta, this weekend. <laughs> I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I got it. We got to have something, don't we? Yeah, we won't. We, they're not going to accuse us of hanging around the bars, that's for sure. No, they're not. And I can't see where my golf ball lands, so that's out. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, can, I still kill plenty of fish, and gosh, do I take enough trips? So, oh, uh, yeah. We, we, yeah. People ask me all the time, why are you still doing this? And I, my answer is, what is exactly you'd have me do? Yes, I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. would be. What's uh, more? The, the, the alternative is, is cold place in the ground. I got it. So I'm doing the same yeah. thing. And I actually love it. I'm happy doing what I'm doing. The, this has been the best time of, of my life. And I've been through some pretty good times in my life. I, I've got no complaints. Yeah. So tell us yeah, about following in your footsteps in the, and see, there's a glamorous part of this that, that I've, you and I discovered it probably the same kind of way. The glamorous part is not only is it like I have to teach a class all weekend and like you do too. And it's an ego trip in one way. I really feel good about that. Uh, I feel even mm-hmm. better when someone calls me up and tells me how they made, I made $72,000 last weekend. Yeah. You won't even believe that because they never made that in their whole, a whole year yeah. in that other business. I feel good yeah. about, about all that. How does sure. a people, how do people follow along in, in this kind of business? Talk a little bit about that marketing and all how right. you grow okay. a business and why are you all successful right. and other people aren't? Okay. First of all, uh, yes, we do live off the accolades. When you uh, have a good product and a good service and you help people make money and change their lives, you're never going to get tired of that. In fact, my, my office is in Jacksonville, Florida, and my students are all over all the walls, all the way up and down the buildings with their testimonial letters, and we get more of them every single week. Nice. And I'm telling you, I never get tired of them when I read them. But what more fun can you have than going out and standing in a room full of people and see people's eyes light up when they see exactly what can be done instead of swapping hours for dollars for their whole life? Right. And it's, of course, even more fun when they actually take it and run with it. Yeah, that's why we do what we do. Now, look, we get paid, so let's don't kid anybody. It ain't like we don't get paid, but that wouldn't be enough to make me want to keep doing it. Right. All right, what was the second question? How well, do we- we're, we're fulfilled. That's Young people don't get fulfillment, that maybe from alcohol and some great weekends somewhere. But when it comes to life, you've got to be fulfilled. So I would say you're fulfilled and I'm fulfilled, and we're always looking for more. We're fulfilled with the the accolades we get and the fact that we've we have done a good in life. So I, I get that. Mm-hmm. I think what people miss is what does it take to to build a business? It doesn't have to be a big business, but okay. what does it take? Is that a, is well, that as yeah. easy as it looks on television or is it a lot harder? Right. Like I said, first of all, you've got to uh, get behind the scenes and learn the stuff you won't. I often tell people you can't learn how to run a restaurant by eating there. You better talk to somebody that's been there, done that. And then give you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and uh, just learn your system. And uh, frankly, um, if you go out and start a business and you don't even know anything about the product you're selling, I'm not sure how long you're going to be around. So we start with something that we want to sell, and then we better start changing our habits because your habits are going to be different when you run a business than when you work in one. Believe me, you're Donald Boss. You're responsible for everything. You've got to watch the cash flow going out and the money coming in and make sure that the chunk of coming in is bigger than the chunk of going out. Because <laughs> <laughs> if it isn't, you got a problem. And, that's, and, I, and I'll tell you, you better develop alligator skin real fast because 
if you're coming from a job market and you're going in to be in business for yourself, you're quickly going to learn that nobody cares if you succeed. They all just soon see you die for that matter, yeah. no matter what comes out of their mouth. So nobody's out to help you. They're all out to hurt you. Yeah. And also better be very careful about to whom you listen because the whole world is full of crap. You can write that one down. The whole world is full of crap. And can we put a couple of pluses on that if they're on the internet? Yeah, yeah, correct. A couple of you pluses. can't believe much oh, of anything you hear until you verify it to be true. Because I often tell my students, you broke people cannot teach you how to get rich. They simply aren't qualified. Yeah. But they sure have their opinions, don't they? And yeah. they're worth what they cost. Yeah. Be careful to whom you listen and verify everything. And then make sure when you're doing deals that everybody wins. You, can, you don't want to run a business where somebody is on a bottom and somebody's on a top. Both of them should get what they want or it's not going to work out very well. And keep your promises. Keep your promises, even when it hurts. Keep your promises even when you don't want to, because if you don't, pretty soon you're going to be labeled as someone who doesn't, and nobody wants to hang around you. Nobody wants to do business with you. Yeah. I know you and I both like to have fun doing what we do, right. because it would be boring as hell if we didn't. But uh, when you make a promise, you keep it. And then you deal with the people who want to deal with you. This is a big one. Uh, I've learned to pre-screen pretty fast, both inside and outside of business. And I just am not going to try to do business with somebody that don't want to do business with me or have a relationship with someone who doesn't want to have a relationship with me. I just you have a special talent. Quick. You have a special talent for for being frank. And I don't mean to say that in a, in a harsh yeah. way, but you're not going to hold punches. You're going to you know, treat a lady like a lady, but you'll also tell her, look, you're just wrong. And you're going to have to do it this way if we're going to stay together. You'll say that to yeah. somebody. If I was a student sitting call- in your house and you yeah. said, if you do that again, I'm going to throw you out of the house. Yeah. I said, oh, my God. That's right. You say that in front of people. Why would you say that in front of – oh, okay. Then I – so I have to be firm. Uh, like, I'm yeah. a hard-headed student, so I'm going I'm yeah. to challenge you back. You have yeah. to be strong. Yeah, if I'm going to help people, I got to tell them like it is, whether they want to hear it or not. And some of them don't. Yeah. And I I tick off a few now and then, but they quickly get over it. They find out there's no money in being ticked off. Yeah. So I've always told it like it is. It's I like it that way, and I address the elephants in the room quickly. So, you know, we don't spend a lot of time with each other only to find out that we're wasting our time. So again, I deal with the people who want to deal with me, and it's not hard to ask a few questions on the front end to determine whether you should go any further. That applies in real estate or any other business for that matter. Yeah. And I guess probably the next trait would be staying in the game. Man, people quit so quick today, don't they? Oh my least little thing goes wrong, shh, they're off sure. to the next shiny object. Yeah. And that's how come you and I are on this call right now. We stayed in the game, man. Yeah, and, and we just adapted. I was going to talk yeah. about growth, but let's talk about adapting for our last five minutes. What does it take to adapt? You and I have seen the real estate business go all the way to the top come all the way to the bottom and then bounce a few times and go back up again. It's just been, it's been a, a uh, ride and boy, yeah. you better pick some things that are going to be sustainable. Yep. And I can tell you, boy, after 2008, whew, the, I'm, we're lucky to be around because we took an 80% drop in revenue in one month, Ted, one 80%, month, 80%, 80% after September. Wow. We had to make some drastic changes and we just had to adapt and it wasn't fun. And I had a whole bunch of commercial projects that went down the tubes and that wasn't fun either. But oh kept on fighting, right. came out on the other side, and frankly, you just don't know how strong you can get until you fight adversity and win it, and that's how you get an alligator skin. You stay in the game, and you keep on fighting. I often tell everybody, well, if, you, if you're going to go stick your head in the sand, where does that put your butt? <laughs> right up in the air to be kicked. <laughs> be kicked. <laughs> be kicked. Somebody will be kicking it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, that was a nice visual. Here yeah, we're on audio. You got a nice visual in there. Yeah, that was good. Okay, good. All right, let's talk it briefly in our, in our last couple of minutes here. All right, so you've been up and down. I've been up and down. I lost, I won't, I can't even tell you how many million in, in, the, in the 80s because I came crashing down. At the time, we had about $200 million in, in apartment properties. And you know what happens to apartments in a recession. People double yep. up, triple up, and all of a sudden, like you said, revenue could drop 80% in a month. All right, so tell me about how you go about br- briefly keeping your employees happy. Uh, that's a good thing. And this is way past uh, anything I plan to ask today. And also, how you plan cash flows. All right. First of all, you better have you better know your numbers. And I don't care what business you're in. And I find, man, so few businesses actually have a clue about their numbers. Right. They, they don't know what their break even is. They don't know what it costs to get a customer. They don't know what a customer is worth. And on, especially brick and mortar business. You talk to one of them about marketing, you can see their eyes cross. I tried that once and it didn't work. 
Better oh, know your numbers. Geez. Didn't work. You're going to try something 10 times and hope it works once. Yeah. 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 Now, in my case, Ted, the reason my people are so happy is because they don't see me much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you said that. Okay. okay I come so in the, boss, the, the boss is not there. I don't believe you're not there. You might not be in their, in their face, but you don't run no, I got, not being there. You, you got there is a, I got a female running the company, as you well know, oh, and yeah, yeah. Uh, she handles all that stuff. And then she's okay. got her folks. And I got about 65, 70 employees sitting around here. But I'm telling you right Whoa. now, if I had to manage that every day, I'd be on a, a Bahamas or somewhere in a hammock with two 25-year-olds. No, I wouldn't do that. I've been married yeah. for 53 years. I better shut up. She might listen to this thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, oh, my God. Anyway, but the thing is, she's still go to slot machines. Does she still play those slot machines? Uh, it's her favorite business. In fact, we're leaving next week for Vegas. Yep. Oh, my God. That won't be. Video poker. She's for hours. Yep. Oh, I'll, I'm telling you. I'm telling uh, you. 15, 16 uh, hours straight. Oh, me. I remember the day. I remember the day. Oh, yeah. my God. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. We got one minute left. Uh, whatever well, you'd like to tell us, and tell certainly well, tell us people how to contact you and anything else. Yeah. You want. Okay. You, you can run over. If you have interest in learning how to get into buying and selling houses without using your money or credit and without taking the risk that most people think that you have to do, I'm going to give you a very good deal on an all-day seminar that I recently recorded, oh. and literally it's all about step by step how to do just that. But here's the cool part. When I do this one day seminar, I ask students to bring in property information sheets on sellers and oh. prepare them before they come. And we literally call the sellers all morning long and uh, turn some of them into terms deals where they always take a monthly payment until they're paid off. And then after lunch, we go through those deals and show the class just how much money is in this thing, literally within 30 days after getting the agreement from the seller. And I'm telling minimum, I don't want to touch a deal that don't get me $20,000 within 30 or so days. Right. That's just that on the front end, it. like I said. Yeah. Yeah. So well, when we do that in the afternoon, people's eyes lights up because they just didn't know. They didn't know that kind of money was available if you get out of the job trap and quit swapping hours for dollars. Right. And then in the afternoon, we talked about uh, how to land trust and how to do this in your IRA and not uh, pay taxes on it and uh, what entity I think you ought to start with. And then last part of that day, I did a thing called how to handle a financial hardship for those that have been through it, like I certainly was after 08. Yeah. So anyway, this comes with a scripts that we use to call the sellers with and a whole bunch of bonuses that I'm not even going to think about describing right now, but there's about $900, $900 worth of courses that come with it for free. Wow. And the good part is that I got this all on digital now. I'm in a digital age, man. I'm wow. hip. Send it so, to them on the internet. Oh, my God. This is unbelievable. Yeah, I, no, not even that. We send them a link. They can watch it on their cell phone if they want to. Oh, yeah. watch it. Because that's what most people want nowadays. Jeez, jeez. So it's an incredible all-day seminar. And here's the good part. It's only $99 for this whole package, and it's a beautiful package. And it comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And in a nutshell, Ted, if uh, they want to spend $99 to learn from the best qualified guy alive to do the business, they can go to thementorpodcast.com forward slash Ted. Thementorpodcast.com forward slash Ted. And so I can be the first That's the easiest way to break in. Because mm -hmm. I can tell you, I have not been through that course, but I have been through your training, and that was uh, two decades ago. And then I've also sat in your home and been taught how to speak on a platform. So I can be wow. the testimonial myself. We, you just, uh, we got a little incredible. better since you listened to it. Yeah, <laughs> a lot better. I'm sure you did. Like, I'm sure you did. I, I even teach them out of uh, where we find the buyers and where we find the sellers. It's an incredible oh. all-day seminar. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. You did a tremendous job. I appreciate you. And I've always appreciated you. And I want to say in front of my audience, and I would say in front of yours anytime you want, I'm not a victim, but I'm a beneficiary of your training over many years. And you are the guru of gurus. Thank you again. And I well, appreciate thank you. you. And before I Vice go, versa. as I close, I would like you to just give the address where to go to spend the best $99 they could ever spend. Okay. The mentor podcast.com forward slash Ted, T-E-D. I'm looking forward to see you at your next birthday party. Okay, good. All, All right. right. See you soon. Good, good talk. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.